tree gunsmithing, Bill Nichols. How you doing? Today, I'm glad y'all stopped by. I really am because uh, uh, we've kind of acquired a Amunus or Armenius or however you want to say it. I'm going to call it an Armenius, and that's my uh, Tennessee German. And it's uh, by H. Weisruf Company out of Germany. And what happened, this is, uh, this belonged to one of these guys that's a do-it-yourselfer. And, you know, when you see people like uh, myself and Scotty down there at Scotty's Gun Works uh, talk about bluing guns and stuff like that, there's a lot more to it than just buffing one down and bluing it. What happened is he... Uh, Sat and watched some videos on gun bluing and making his home remedy, and uh, he turned around and he buffed all of his parts out. But then part of his parts were made from uh, aluminum, aluminum alloy. And what happened when he put it in the bluing salts is it just eat it up. Well. <laughs> He come to me wanting to know if I had parts for it, and I said, no. I said, I'll see if I can find them. And I couldn't find any, not at that time. And uh, because it's FIE imported, and so I told him I couldn't find them. He, he said, well, won't you just buy the thing from me? He says, I asked him what he wanted for it, and... Uh, it really wasn't too much, but in a way it was, because I didn't know if I'd find parts for it. So I gave him about half of what he's asking for. And uh, I was talking to my good friend, Scotty, down at Scotty's Gun Works, down in Tennessee. And he's got one like this that's a 45 long coat. And he told me that it was a EAA. And said they were all the same. Uh, you know, by the same company, said it just the imports were different companies, you know, the importers. So I got online, and I got to check, and I found them. I, I called them people. It was it was by a fluke accident that I seen the phone number. Uh, I was watching a video on there about uh, 454 Casals, because that's what I'm wanting to get. And this guy showed one that he, uh, the next video that come up uh, was a guy that had just bought one of these new through EAA and when he turned that box over it showed the phone number and so I went ahead and I just I called them and they said well yeah we got all the parts so I've been waiting you know about a week just biting the bit I mean you know uh, waiting on these parts to come in and the cameraman said boy that'd be a good in the film right there so uh, come on in here with us and, and we'll start uh, you know Trying to put this thing back together. I guess what we'll start is uh, with the uh, uh, ejector tube, and uh, because it was eat up and, and everything else. Anyway, I guess we'll reach out here. I know, first thing I need to do is put on these high tech glasses. You know, tomorrow is when I get my surgery on my one eye, and then they go two weeks later on the other one. And I'm really excited because I'm hoping and praying that my eyesight, you know, that they get what they, uh, they're shooting for. They're shooting for 2020. Now, if they're shooting for 2020 uh, on that, uh, you talk about a happy camper. Now, this old booger right here, I'll be one happy camper. I mean, like, uh, like that guy on, uh, what is it, uh, Duck Dynasty or something like that. Happy, happy, happy. That's what I'll be. I'll be happy, happy, happy. No doubt. But anyway, I should explain what I was doing there. I slipped the spring on that. Now this thing's got, I don't know if you can see it there, it's got like a little trough there. It kind of locks it out. Bring it up. Slide it up. Alright. Turn the bar arm over this way. Now they, there's one thing about it. Uh, looking at this thing, I think you know that I didn't have to check it to make sure it wouldn't load it. 
you know, that's the first thing with any firearm you do is you check it to make sure it's not loaded. But come on, half this thing ain't together. So we, I believe we're in good shape. So don't none of you guys out there, uh, you know, start uh, hollering and screaming and everything else and saying, oh my God, you see that old man? Yeah, working on that gun and he didn't even check it to see if it had anything in it. You know, so you've got a place right here that that slides into. And then up here, you've got a, a uh, little bitty, if I can get that thing to slide in there. There we go. It sits right down on it, right there. Like that. Let me see now. I've got a screw somewhere. Okay, so we got, reach over here and get that screw. And it goes in right there. Push it on down there. Come on, get, get in the hole, honey. Take my trusty screwdriver here and get the get it lined up. Now this is a 44 Magnum, and so I'll tell you, man, better make sure they tap because these things do have a lot of recoil. There we go. You can see it right there how they come out into that cylinder. Pop that out. All right, we turn this baby up. This way, I'm gonna put the cylinder in last, I guess. All right. Now we took this thing while we was uh, waiting on parts. I guess I should have filmed it, but you know, it, it takes so long sometimes to do these uh, videos. That. Uh, but now what I've done is I took the hammer out, and I kept a. Uh, working it you only had three clicks in it and I wanted this to be just as close to a Colt clone as it could be but it be in the 44 magnums uh, bracket but I wanted it to click on the sear four times like a Colt you know with Colt clones you cock them back and they spell out C-O-L-T Colt and so that's what I wanted on this one right here. I mean, you know, I may keep this, I may sell it, it just depends. What I'm really wanting is a uh, Ruger Blackhawk uh, 44, uh, 454 console. I'll get it out in a minute. But everything I've checked on, man, they're over $1,000 now. You know, I should have bought one you know how that goes. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but I shoulda bought one back when they was uh, $700-$800. Yeah. Really, I shoulda bought one when they was back about six. But, you know, because with one of them, you can, you can shoot four different rounds in them. Uh, I'm either going to get one of those or the Smith 270 or 470, excuse me, 460. I'll get it out right in a minute. Right now, I don't even, I didn't even think I told you what I was putting on here. We're sticking the trigger guard on and the trigger guard and the front strap on the grip is made together. But now, I tell you, most of the time when I offer somebody something, it's a, it's a fair deal, unless they try to be a gunsmith themselves. And if it's something you need to take to a gunsmith, and they mess it up, if I can get it for nothing, I'll get it for nothing. Because, and, and I mean, I'm that way. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be, but you know, if if somebody brings me a gun and they've tore it apart trying to fix it and I know they've had it apart then that's automatic $50 right there for me to work on me to even look at it I mean it's automatic $50 because people you know not everybody's a gunsmith so you need to if you don't know what you're doing you need to leave these things alone because I'm gonna tell you something these things are dangerous dangerous and so if you don't then 
you know, especially with me, they bring something and they've messed it up because of uh, not knowing what they're doing, then uh, I just tell you, I don't have any mercy on them when, I, when it comes to uh, uh, buying the firearm from them. Because I'll sure get it for nothing if I can, you know. Now what we're doing, we're trying to get that mainspring in there. Okay, we finally got that lined up. That's the mainspring for the hammer. I guess I should have telling you, should be telling you what's next, but you know you do this stuff so much that you just automatically just do it. There you go. Now let's see if we got it in right. Oh, look at there. There's one click, two clicks, three clicks, and four. C O L T. Look at that. How about that? Alrighty. I just get plum excited when I get these things, <laughs> get them close to getting done. Anyway, alright, let's see here. Got to put the. I had to take this part. I wanted to check all the screw holes because, you know, when somebody else is manufacturing something or something like that, sometimes, you know, you got. Uh, my dogs are in rare form. But, you know, y'all know I've got dogs. So, you know, if they, if they get too rowdy, I'm, I'm going to go lock them in the bedroom. You know. But anyway. Uh, I had to re-tap this hole or clean it out with a tap. It's 840. And uh, because you could not get a screw started in that thing. I mean, I tried and tried and tried and I couldn't do it. You know. So anyway, all right. Now this has got the solid type grip. So the way you do that is this has got to fit on here first. You know, fits up on that right there. And then this part will come up in here, like so. And then we'll put the screws in here. That one goes on the bottom. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I'm a neighbor. I got some good neighbors. I really do. And she called me last night, and uh, I had made a comment on Facebook about what she said about her and her husband in Valentine's Day. Of course, now, you know, I was like a Valentine's Day Scrooge, maybe. I guess if you want to call it that. Uh, but. I put in there humbug, Valentine's Day my ass. But anyway, she, uh, she called me, you know, and I she had said something real sweet about her husband, you know. And so I just got in there and I said, well, you know, that's the sweet that brings tears to my eyes. So she called me yesterday evening and was thanking me about, you know, what I had put in there. And she said, now, you know, now, it's Tuesday when you're going to have your eye operated on, right? And I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she said, well, I just tell you, I'm going to make you some uh, beef stew and homemade cornbread. I said, you are? She goes, yeah, and you're going to eat it and like it. So I was sitting there thinking, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, ain't no problem on that end. I mean, you know. But, uh, oh, they're wonderful people. They really are. Great supporters of, uh, of me doing this. Matter of fact, uh, back in the summer, uh, he told me, uh, I'm not going to mention no names on here, but anyway, the man told me, her husband, 
He said, man, he said, if I knowed as much about stuff as you do, he said, I don't care what it is. You've just about worked with it. And uh, he said, I'd make videos, share that knowledge with people. And so that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm uh, trying to do. Besides trying to get this screwdriver and that dad burn slot on that, <laughs> on that screw, and I can move this thing over here like that. Ah. Now I got a mustache itch on top of everything else. Well, but you know what? I'm kind of surprised, really. I mean, you know. Uh, there was a couple of things on here that, you know, I had to, uh, when I had to gun it completely apart, you know, that uh, I was, uh, well, one thing about them fine thread screws, <sighs> seems like it takes forever to get them in. I got one screw left. This is the one that went down in here. But these fine thread screws, it takes forever. And it's good and flush. Yeah. Looks good. Those are good. No scratches. No nothing. Oh man, I tell you what. This thing's starting to look like a like a pistol. Where's my little bitty? Oh, where's that? Where's that? Oh, there it is. Now there wasn't no use of oiling them straps, so I wasn't too much worried about it. But uh, the pin and all that, yeah. Yeah. Oil them up. There I am with that brush. I just put a drop on it. But now you can see, if you can see in there that glare, it looks like it's a little wet, you know. And that's that oil on there. You don't need a bunch on it. Telling you, telling you, telling you. You know. And if I sound like a broken record, I just have to sound like one. All right, now this thing fits so tight. I mean, it, you just have to more or less hold your mouth right. I may have to hold mine crooked. This thing is super tight, though. I'm not kidding you. This is a real firearm because, uh, you know, a lot of them, they just, if you don't get it straight, man, I mean, this sucker just ain't going in. Let me get it. I don't know if she'll go in from the other side or not. Doubtful. Might, but I doubt it. No, it ain't even gonna think about going in that side. Because it has to go in from this side. There you go, man. That thing's so tight. Which, that's, you know, German, uh, Firearm manufacturers, you know, they, uh, and you got a little button on that side right there that you can push and uh, make sure that went in all the way. And then, there you go, function check. Fire. Cylinder turning tight. I mean, super tight. Look at that, man. Fire, still tight. Well, there we go. The Armenius, or Amunis, or uh, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's by, uh, it's got the, right here, it's the model of it. It's an ARM-44. Uh, I don't know if that's a, if I need to hold it up higher, or. Something like that, it's an ARM-44, and it's an Arminius 44 Magnum. Now that will throw a heck of a punch. At, at one time, the 44 Magnum used to be the most powerful handgun in the world. And uh, now, I think they're probably about third. I mean, you know, uh, but, uh, I may have to dress that just a little bit, I think, or I feel a little rough. But anyway, uh, we'll probably end up uh, selling this one. I don't know. But first, I'm going to find what I'm looking for before I let it go. I've got some 44 special shells back there, so I'll probably just load it with it, put it in a holster. You know, I probably have to make a holster for it because this one's longer than the holster I got. 
the holster I got, I could probably, uh, if I wanted to, saw the barrel off and then rig mill it and put the sight back here and make it work. But, ah, eh, it's all right. I'll leave it the way it is. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad y'all come out and spend a little time with us. The dogs, they're kind of in rare form this evening, but, you know, we're going to wipe it off our little fingerprints and all that stuff. Got this cotton rag here. That's about the best that you can use. But uh, anyway, right there it is. The Arminius 44 Magnum. And we just got through putting it together. And uh, But you know, if any of you other guys out there want to try doing gunsmithing yourself and you wearing your gun, just bring it to me. <laughs> I mean, that may not sound like a joke to you, but I tell you what, I really got this and that a good deal. So, uh, uh, anyway, uh, subscribe and like us, if you like us. If you don't like us, well, anyway, I don't claim to be a professional. We don't rehearse nothing. Uh, I don't even go through, really, and uh, I'm just country. And y'all gonna have to take me the way I am. I mean, hey, hey, you like my shirt here? That's it. Ain't that something? That's my shirt. I like it. Plus, look here. Shows them muscles too, buddy, where I've been working out. Yeah. <laughs> Keep telling you that I go to the gym. You know, somebody's thinking, every time they see me, I got a real loose shirt on and everything. I bet they're thinking, yeah, I bet he goes to the gym. Uh -huh. We're right there. Look at that. 67 years of age. What do you think? Hmm? Have a good one. And I want you to come back and see us again.